Welcome back. Uh, good uh, chance for me on again. Yeah, look at that shirt, huh? Not bad. Is this a uh, past seasons kit? What, what are we talking? Obviously, it's not a home kit. What is it? No, nah, it's one of the training kits. I think Jorgensen was actually wearing it in a clip that's been doing around today. But um, yeah, it's a training kit from one or two seasons ago. I think I've got for a fun. keeper, a keeper training kit. Uh, they, you know what? Villarreal because the uh, yellow kit is used in near enough every game of the season. The goalkeeper often wears the away kits or like the outfield player kits. It's that. Yeah, they only wear yellow against Cadiz or Las Palmas. Um, every other game, it's just pure yellow. Oh, all right. Oh, good to know. Um, it's it's actually not a bad look. Um, I, I would look horrible in it. Uh, I'm just tweeting out that we're joined by a uh, new Philip Jorgensen expert right now. New and old. So you were you must have been on the show. I just have clearly a bad memory. I mean, I, I remember you, but I just have a bad memory of like speaking about Jorgensen. Uh, you must have been on the show when we initially got linked at the end of May, huh? Yeah, and yeah, it was the end of May, and that was when there was just there wasn't a bid or anything. It was just um, kind of yeah, speculative links. And I think at the time I said I'd be shocked if this actually went anywhere. So bodes well that it looks like it's about to happen. Okay, well, just start there. Why did you say that at the time that you'd be shocked if it went anywhere? And now, how are you feeling that you see it probably is going to go somewhere? Well, um, I think at the time when I said that, it was on the basis that, yeah, Jorgensen, he's a good keeper. He came along, he's only had one full season, really. And at the time, and I'd say the same thing now, is that I don't believe he's ready to start for Chelsea. And at the time, I was thinking, he's Villarreal's number one, and they put faith in him to be that next season. So if he's going to move, why would it be to the bench? So it's it's a bit in between. It's, he's too good to be a backup in a way, but he's also, I just don't think he's ready for Chelsea yet. And that's the same thing now. The other, like when it's come out in the last two days, yeah, I've been pretty baffled that, not, well, actually no, baffled's a bit harsh, but he signed he signed a contract about a month ago after we did our call. It was a few days after that, yeah. probably about a week after that. He signed a contract of 2029. It raised his release clause to 45 million euros. And on that basis, I think the club basically assumed that, yeah, he would stay. He would start next season. He'd continue as number one. And so to, to then see that he's, yeah, he's agreed terms to leave. Bids are going in. It looks like it will happen. I'm pretty surprised in a way. Yeah, um, I thought Chelsea were also... Like, you can correct me on this. I thought their stance had changed that they weren't going to sign a keeper. And now it seems that they are. Yeah. Uh, it's a really important position to us. It's really, 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 really important. There are a lot of keepers out there that excite a lot of people out there who are Chelsea fans. And your boy is the guy that we're deciding on. So uh, Villarreal should feel uh, really warm and fuzzy about that. Uh, your guy is the pick of the bunch that we're saying uh, is our guy. So hmm. give us the glass half full. Give us the glass half full first on why this could work. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. I searched through Chelsea tweets on Jorgensen earlier. There's a lot of negativity and I kind of get it. To give some positives, to give you guys a bit of optimism, he has a lot of potential. I, I do, I can see why in a way that both Newcastle and Chelsea were after him. Like he's 22. He's had one full season of seeing experience over the course of the season. He improved a lot from the start of the season to now it's levels apart. It's, it's a bit like what Jackson did at Villarreal in his season there, where he started, he looked very raw, big question marks, but he ended the season brilliantly. And it's the same with Jorgensen by the end of the season, he, to his credit, basically ended talk about Villarreal signing a new number one. For years, that was a thing. Ruli was the number one before when, just after winning Europa League, and I was never a fan of him. And for years, I thought, yeah, Villarreal's number one priority has to be a goalkeeper. Ruli left, Jorgensen, yeah, then got thrown into it last season. And by even by December last season, I was thinking, still need a new goalkeeper. And yeah, so to his credit, he's worked his way into that number one spot. He's kept it. And yeah, 
with Villarreal basically starting the next season, I was pretty happy with that. Like he he showed really big signs of improvement. Yeah, he's only twenty two. There's not many starting goalkeepers in top flight leagues who are that young and that inexperienced. And so yeah, I can see the potential. He's re- he is good on the ball. I think he does suit Maresca's system. I think especially short passing. He's just so suited to a team that's going to play out the back. And I do also think he's better than Chelsea's current options. I don't really rate Robert Sanchez. Like, again, you guys are Chelsea. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You're a smart man. Yeah. And Petrovic, yeah, he's similar to Petrovic in a way. He's a young keeper with potential like Petrovic. I'd say Jorgens is ahead of him. And I'd say he's more suited to the style that Enzo Moresco wants to play. So there's a bit of optimism for you. I think that's, that's the positive I'll give is that stylistically suits and if he continues the way he's gone in how rapidly he's improved over the course of a year if he continues that next year then he's going to turn into a top keeper okay so you do think he has like really high potential yeah i mean it's a question of how high you can it's tough to judge a 22 year old goalkeeper i think what he does need is he needs to play regularly and if he's going to go to chelsea and robert sanchez is going to start that will do him no favours. Right now, he needs to play regularly, but also getting chucked into the deep end at Chelsea. Yeah, will he cope with the pressure, getting thrown into what is an unstable team, a lot of changes in the back line. The same with Villarreal, to be fair. Yeah, I'm not sure if that suits him either, but the key thing for him to just keep improving is that he got thrown into the deep end. He was the starting keeper, and he just took to the role over the course of the season he didn't hide and so yeah in that sense i think yeah i think in great role i think yeah he's just got a lot of potential so based off of what uh happened to him of getting thrown into the deep end d- deep end i don't know what that came from um so mentally maybe he can handle being thrown into the deep end in england perhaps maybe maybe yeah possibly he seems like an ambitious guy at all you know well, I mean, he's been he's willing to make the move right now from a guaranteed, well, pretty True. much guaranteed number one spot to yeah, fighting for his role. Villarreal did sign a goalkeeper, Diego Conde. He he won the Golden Glove in the second division last season, and he was brought in on the basis that they compete for the role, but Jorgensen would be number one. So Jorgensen knew that if he stays at Villarreal, yeah, he he'd be the number one, and he's he's taken to a role. He's, 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 he's essentially agreed to move to Chelsea where he may not have been promised that, but he's willing to fight for the spot. So, yeah, can't really question the mentality. It's not something I've questioned before. I think we'll come up with his ability, but um, in that sense, yeah, he's he's handled pressure before. It might it would be a different level of pressure at Chelsea. Um, but could he do it? I think, yeah, it is tough to say, but... All right, I'll, 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 listen, I'll, I'll make it easy for you. I asked you why it could work at Chelsea. Now tell me why it might not work. What are his weaknesses? What would fill you with uh, pessimism? Well, the main thing is, is that his shot stopping and people were throwing around this stat all day that he's made the most saves in La Liga last season. Yeah, but he was also, Villarreal just had their goal peppered. Like the back line was a complete mess. It was, there was injuries all over the place. Paul Torres left. Um, with no real replacement. like It was a lot of constant rotation throughout the back line. So he wasn't helped in that regard. Yeah, his goal was peppered, but I don't think he's a great shot stopper. I He can pull out a good save, a great save occasionally. He's got good reflexes. But when, when he's had a shot fired at him, he often... He's got this tendency to just parry it into danger which i always spot in a keeper i always think is a red flag and yeah like if you've seen my work worked on goalkeepers before yeah i just i'm not being his biggest fan in that sense i think his biggest strengths are his passing on the ball i think he's composed when playing out the back which villarreal do i think villarreal had the most touches in their own defensive third out of any la liga team last season but yeah if you ask what his biggest weakness is and i wouldn't say he's I'd say actually in the air is his biggest weakness. He's six foot three, but he's not got amazing command of his box. He's not the most vocal. And yeah, he, I guess you can maybe put that down to inexperience. But then how is he going to handle that? 
if he's now moving to Chelsea in a new look back line where he'd probably be the most inexperienced player in that back line. He sounds like a modern day goalkeeper in every sense of the way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He is very modern. In if you think about Edison, for example, where no one really credits his shot stopping too highly, but he's great with the ball. It's a bit like that, except yeah, it's his shot stopping is average. I say I don't want to be too harsh because I think I I, I don't mind him, but yeah. I, you, when, you know what's I, funny? Not to cut you off, but Yohare67 just sent a power chat saying, is Ederson a commanding and great shot stopper? So wait a minute. It's a good thing to not be commanding and not be a great shot, shot, shot stopper just because Ederson has managed to be a very good goalkeeper and he's not commanding or a good shot stopper? How does that make sense? So, oh, it's a good thing. It's good that he's not commanding and that he's not a great shot stopper because Ederson isn't, and Ederson is actually good. Where's the Felix? Is that doing your head in? Like, like it's mine? Yeah, it's so silly. It's so silly. Like th these are just intangible things. These are just things that goalkeepers need to be able to do, and he actually can't do it. Like I, I like Jorgensen for his passing. I think he's hit the nail on the head, but. You're giving up a lot of qualities that you shouldn't just ignore because you need someone who can pass the ball. You know, it's, we're not, we're not. We should might as well just buy Jason Steele if we're trying to do this. No point. Oh, I, I just don't understand. It's like once again, I want him to be good. So I hope, and I'm about to ask you a question about actually how he improved that someone mentioned in the chat. But some people right now, and this is not really your problem, Raul, but I have to just get it off my chest. Some people right now are blindly, blindly following Clear Lake and the scouts, where they're looking at any negative that is being brought up by someone reasonable like you, Rule, and all the Villarreal fans who have seen Jorgensen. The people who are saying this in the chat haven't seen Jorgensen. They're taking your very balanced and objective criticisms, even though you have been fairly fair as well, and you mentioned positives as well. They're taking your criticisms. They're getting defensive and sensitive over them. And they're trying to think of one person who's also not good at those things, but is actually a good keeper. And it's like, you don't have to do that. It's okay. You can put your head on the pillow tonight, right? And you can at least say to yourself, this might not work. This might not work. Jorgensen's coming here and he's not coming here as Petr Cech. He's not coming here as Ederson. He's not coming here as the finished product. It's okay. You don't have to lie to yourself. Oh, good. Not commanding. Not a good shot stopper. Nor is Ederson. Wonderful. We're getting Ederson. It's insane. It's insane. Oh, here goes Robert. Ederson and Raya. Oh, yeah. David Raya. Oh, yeah, Robert. We're cooking with gas now. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Robert, do you even believe the things that come out of your mouth? are both average shot stoppers and their teams finished first and second. Well, cheers, Robert. Jorgensen will get us to win the Premier League, Robert. Wonderful. Cancel the season, Felix. We've won the Premier League. Cancel it. Cancel it. This has gone crazy. This has gone absolutely crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, Robert's brain has to be studied by science. Well, I will say, I will to, say to, to create a bit of a balance, I think there's like, you can make the point that the fact that Edison and Raya, the keepers of City and Arsenal, show that maybe within this system that we're trying to emulate, that you can kind of go with distribution over shot stopping, and it worked for them. I, I don't, I think that you shouldn't give up on stuff, and I think there are keepers out there. Uh, like, okay, I don't want to mention him because people get annoyed, but I think Luis Junior fits like every single box you kind of want to fit. Obviously, he's not that experienced. So I, I, I don't want to give up those those things. I don't think Chelsea will hit the ground running like Arsenal and City have. So shot stopping will be more important than uh, than to City and Arsenal. But I do I do get what people say where, you know, them two being first and having keepers that aren't don't especially excel in shot stopping and maybe cross collection. It shows that distribution is the main thing they're looking for. So I get it. But uh, yeah, I, I still agree with you. Okay, so Rule, as I clap back at Robert, who's telling me to think when he's literally the person who has no opinions of his own and he literally just agrees with everything the club does. While I do that, Rule, how did Jorgensen improve? What did he improve on from the beginning of the season to the end of the season? Well, he just became a lot more confident. I think back to his, prem his La Liga debut and that came uh, last season, that came in 2023, just after Rudy left and yeah, he got thrown in. Villarreal lost 1-0 to Rai Vallecano and he 
he had a stinker for the goal. And at that time, I think I remember tweeting, thinking Villarreal simply have to sign a goalkeeper now. He's just not ready. And yeah, he only played twice more for the rest of the season. Pepe Reina, 40-year-old, came in. He was a disaster as well. Um, and then, yeah, then he just started last season as a number one. I think they clocked that Reina was so just so beyond past it. And yeah, they, they were willing to give him a chance. And to be fair, he then took it. At the start of last season, there was still massive question marks over him. He started the season... Villarreal were really poor. Seti and left after four or five games. And then Pacheta came in as manager. It was, again, a complete... Just the whole team was in shambles. And I was still... I was unconvinced over most of the players on the pitch. But there was one game which then Jorgensen really just stepped up. And that was end of September last year. Um, Villarreal went, went away to Getafe. Tough place to go hard tackling team, not not the easiest away day. They went man down because Alex Bayena got a stupid red card about 25 minutes in. Mm-hmm. And Getafe just absolutely peppered Villarreal's goal. I think Villarreal only, only won one in the opening eight games or something. It was looking like just another defeat. Jorgensen then fully stepped up. He made something like eight saves. Eight pretty good saves as well. Like, he was really quick off his line and that was the foot and yeah he got the clean sheet Villarreal got the points somehow against all the odds and after that game at full time I was sat there thinking yeah Jorgensen he really stepped up that's the first time I thought okay this guy's actually quite good he's got I can see the potential there and then yeah he just kept his place yeah Marcelino came back to Villarreal after about seven years away and Villarreal improved they focus more on kind of build-up play. And that's where Jorgensen really then came into his own. His short passing is really good. And he does suit that kind of team. And that's why I think Chelsea scouts, yeah, they've been hit and miss in the last few years, but they've obviously seen that this is his strength. And over the course of the season, he's gone from, it's just what the kind of fans think of him as well, just in the ground. Yeah, they, they went from this this guy's not great. This guy's really inexperienced. He's still not ready. To by the end of the season, yeah, he's he's good. He's he's answered that question. He's solved a big problem for Villarreal. And yeah, I've been just more and more impressed with the way it's just the confidence he shows. When he first came in, he was shaky on corners. He's still not amazing in the air. The stats will back that as well. But it's just when you when you have a goalkeeper, and people mentioned David Ryan in there, you want him to be able to command his box well. You want him to be able to communicate well with his back line. You want him to be vocal. You want him to be confident. You don't want him to be shy. You don't want him sat on his own goal line, looking unsure of himself. And yeah, Jorgensen, by the end of the season, wasn't that. On a technical level, yeah, in the air, got room to improve. But yeah, I'd say the improvement was just the way he would command his back line improved a lot over the course of the season. Okay. All right, I like hearing that. I like hearing that. So, final question: What, what, as a Villarreal fan, what's a fair price in your eyes? Well, yeah. So I saw what the bid was twenty million euros, something like that. Sixty. Yeah, million I think Fab just said tonight maybe twenty five million euros, which would be twenty million pounds. I don't know. Well, so I think twenty five million euros would be a great sale in a way because I think Villarreal. Yeah, they can replace him if they already haven't with Conde coming in. They can replace him for less than that in a way. They just they just need, for me, I've, that's what I've said for years, they just need a competent goalkeeper. And I think 25 million euros, I think, I think Chelsea are overpaying a bit compared to what else they can get for that price. I look at Manuel Dashvili of Valencia, and I go to a lot of Valencia games as well. I think he's a level above Jorgensen. And he's reportedly available for maybe what five, ten million more. Not short that. passing distribution wise, though, which is probably like but, what we're looking for. But then in in the Valencia team, they are a team that just don't play at the back. They lump it long. He's told to lump it long, and he's yeah. It, I feel like that's something he can adapt if he's put in a different style of team. I don't think it's a technical fault of Mamadashvili. I think it's just the way Valencia play. They've had very, very defensive managers. Very. Like Ruben Baraja right now, they really just don't they don't like keeping the ball at all. He's just asked to lump it long. They've got big strikers. Compared to Villarreal, who are very much keen on knocking around the back, 
building up play slowly and building up through that. So, yeah, I think I think 25 million is not an excessive overpay, but I'd say 20 million euros. So, yeah, around 16, 17 million would be a fair price for both teams. Well, let, me ask, potential. well let me ask you this. What's a better deal? Let's say it's 22 million pounds for Jorgensen. 22 million pounds. Is that better or worse than 32 million pounds for Nicholas Jackson? Um, I'd say 32 million for Jackson was probably better. For Chelsea? Yeah, for Chelsea. Yeah. Because Jackson, the way he ended the season for Villarreal, he was unbelievable. Like he scored, what, 11 in 10 or something? He was, he went from someone who, yeah, his built, his play around the box was good, but Villarreal fans were actually mocking him. Well, not mocking him, but the whole talk was, oh, he just can't finish. Then he came back from injury and just started banging them in and everyone could see the potential. And so when he left, everyone was a bit gutted to lose Jackson. They won't be that gutted with um, Jorgensen. It'd be the case of he's had, yeah, what, 75% of a good season. He's improved a lot, but that's good money for him. Whereas Jackson, it was he was really on fire and it would have been, everyone thought he'd be tougher to replace. So, yeah, I'd say Chelsea would have got the better deal of Jackson there. Okay. All right. Well, Rule, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, it seems like it's going to happen. So I will talk to you next summer when we come in for another Villarreal player. Yeah. Just hope it's someone I don't like. <laughs> well, no offense. There are not many other players I want from your club. Uh, that's not an insult. Necess- well, I guess it is an insult. I know Jeremy Pino had a good game today, right? Yeah. He's just come back from long ACL injury. So he would have otherwise moved last summer, I think. I don't um, want to know. Bayana is someone to watch this summer. Yeah, I was about to say him next. I, Pino and Bayana. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a no on Pino. Maybe Bayana. Maybe, maybe we'll talk, but uh, probably not. Uh, well, Bayana's anyway. talented. He's just a shit house. Like if you think of, if he comes to the Premier League, he'll be the next villain. He'll be the next Bruno Fernandez, where everyone hates him. Bayana, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, such yeah. a dirty player. I mean, you were even saying that life. in one of those games, he got a red card. So yeah. Um, no, I, that would make me be somewhat open to him because, listen, if you're a shit house, that's why I was open to John Duran from Aston Villa. Um, I, I think we kind of need one of those. But anyway, thank you so much, Rule. You were really good and uh, clearly a top guy, so I appreciate it. Yeah, cheers for having me on again. See you awesome. guys. All right. Well, cool. We've gotten 